At the end of January 2023, an official of the China Information Consumption Alliance said in an interview with Global Times, China's official media, that China was building chip manufacturing plants at a rate of 100 production lines per year. However, under the American sanctions, the construction of these chip factories may be delayed or forced to switch to mature processes. At present, the integrated circuits or IC industry generally regards 28 nanometer as the watershed between mature process and advanced process. 28 nanometers and above are mature processes, and below 28 nanometers are advanced processes. China's homegrown semiconductor equipment rate is less than 20%. Its production capacity is mainly concentrated in the mature process above 28 nanometers. Due to the large gap to the advanced level, China has to import many medium and high-end semiconductor products every year, especially in the CPU, GPU, and memory areas, which rely almost entirely on imports. On January 27, 2023, sources told Bloomberg and the Financial Times, respectively, that the U.S., the Netherlands, and Japan had reached an agreement to restrict the export of chip manufacturing tools to China. The current governments of these countries have said the new controls are in the interest of national security. Data shows that in 2019, the U.S. accounted for 41% of the total value of global semiconductor equipment manufacturing. Japan accounted for 32%. In Europe, mainly the Netherlands ACML accounted for 18%. The three countries together account for 90% of the market. This means that the U.S., Japan, and the Netherlands, which together account for 90% of the share of the global semiconductor equipment market, have joined forces to impose a blockade on China. This would effectively strike a devastating blow to Chinese semiconductor companies. This is not an exaggerated statement. Leslie Wu, a Taiwanese-born semiconductor consultant and vice president of ESG division of China Jinghong Gas, described it this way to the South China Morning Post. With the agreement reached between the U.S., the Netherlands, and Japan, the door to non-U.S. equipment on which the entire Chinese chip industry has relied on for the past two years has officially closed. Wu said without foreign technology, China's semiconductor industry would need at least 20 years to close the technology gap and reach the current level. The Netherlands is a key player in the U.S. strategy to cut off supplies of microchips to China, while Japan has expressed a willingness to cooperate with the U.S. According to three U.S. officials directly involved in these discussions, the U.S. has spent months seeking help from the Netherlands regarding the need to take a tough stance against the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. And uh, together we're working on uh, how to uh, uh, keep a free and open Indo-Pacific uh, and, uh, quite frankly, uh, meet the challenges of China. Simply put, our, companies, our countries have been so far in just lockstep in what we've done in our vision for the future. And so today I look forward to discussing uh, how we can further deepen our relationship and securing our supply chains to strengthen our transatlantic partnership. And thank you again, Mr. Minister. We've had a great relationship with all our countries personally, and I look forward to discussing a lot more in detail. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also thank you for hosting me. It's the first time in my five well, visits that the fireplace uh, is all. Have you made any progress in getting those countries to join the efforts that the U.S. has started to restrict China's access to those uh, semiconductors to that technology? So just want to be very clear on this as, as well. We don't push any of our allies or our partners. Uh, we consult with them closely uh, and they make their own decisions. And this is how we uh, we move forward with our relationship, again, with our allies and partners. We all recognize the importance of this issue to, to national security, and the president did discuss it, uh, along with a host of other important regional and global issues. Bloomberg and the Financial Times reported, according to people familiar with the matter, during the talks, the U.S. reached an agreement with the Netherlands and Japan to restrict exports of some advanced chip-making machines to China. The agreement will extend U.S. chip technology export controls imposed in October 2022 to companies in the Netherlands and Japan, including ASML, Nikon, and Tokyo Electron Limited. The most critical blow to China's semiconductor industry after the three countries join forces will be in the field of photolithography machines. A chip fab can contain 1,000 or more tools, each tuned for a different step in the process. 
U.S. companies such as Applied Materials, KLA, and LAM Research dominate the chip manufacturing equipment industry. But in the field of lithography, dominated by Dutch company ASML and Japan's Nikon and Canon, there were no strong competitors inside the U.S. The tools involved in lithography can be as large as a double-decker bus and weigh more than 200 tons. They produce focus beams of light to form microscopic circuits on computer chips used in a variety of everyday and commercial goods, from cell phones and laptops to cars and artificial intelligence. Specifically, photolithography is at the heart of chip makers, much like a knife used for carving wood, except that photolithography uses chemicals. The silicon squares left after etching become transistors. The more transistors on a wafer, the more powerful the wafer is. One of the best ways to etch more transistors on a wafer is to etch the lines finer. The Dutch company ASML's photolithography machine is capable of etching some of the thinnest lines in the world today. The largest and most precise photolithography machine requires three Boeing 747s to transport it in sections and costs up to US $160 million. For lithography machines, the core technology is the light source. Based on the advanced order of light source technology, lithography machines can be divided into three categories, ultraviolet light, deep ultraviolet light, and extreme ultraviolet light. Since 2000, ASML has rapidly taken away the market share from its Japanese competitors and is currently the only company in the world that can manufacture EUV lithography. Canon and Nikon can only manufacture DUV lithography. ASML controls more than 80% to 90% of the lithography market. Because of the expensive development cost, no competitor will likely try to build the most complex EUV system. Now competitors such as Canon and Nikon can only produce older generation chip manufacturing tools. Nikon's core capabilities are concentrated in the lowest end UV lithography segment and the next high end DUV segment. After realizing the technology's critical role in driving computing power, Intel, Samsung Electronics, and TSMC acquired a stake in ASML in 2012. The U.S. contacted the Netherlands several times back in the time of former President Trump's administration, trying to stop ASML from exporting lithography to the CCP. In May 2018, the Chinese company SMIC ordered one of the latest EUV lithography machines from ASML. The equipment, valued at up to U.S. $150 million, was expected to be delivered in early 2019. Under pressure from the White House, SMIC's EU lithography deal with ASML was put on hold, and only the DUV lithography were subsequently delivered to SMIC. The DUV equipment is a generation behind the EUV. Subsequent U.S. lobbying has strained Sino-Dutch relations. The Wall Street Journal reported on July 19, 2021, that according to sources familiar with the matter, CCP officials made frequent inquiries of Dutch officials as to why the license was not issued, preventing ASML from selling EUV lithography to China. In 2020, the then Chinese ambassador to the Netherlands told a Dutch newspaper that trade relations between the two countries were expected to be damaged if ASML wasn't allowed to export high-end lithography machines to China. After news of the successful U.S.-Japan-Dutch alliance, Politico reported that the export restrictions being considered by these allies would target some of ASML's deep ultraviolet lithography machines. In the future, not only the EUV lithography, but probably the DUV lithography won't be exported to China. In other words, it will be difficult for Chinese chip companies to increase their production capacity for a while. China's existing photolithography machines, because many important components are dependent on imports, once the contracted maintenance period has passed, any failure in the machines is likely to turn them into scrap metal. Surely, the dependence between allies is mutual. Public information shows that half of the current 17 core suppliers of ASML are American companies. At the same time, almost all of the world's chip manufacturers depend on the critical technology of the U.S., the share of U.S. companies in the semiconductor equipment market ranks first in the world. Therefore, when the U.S., Japan, and the Netherlands unite to block the chip industry of the CCP, China is left with no chance to build a leading industry by itself. The U.S. side has repeatedly used its national power to abuse export controls and politicize, instrumentalize, and weaponize science and technology and economic and trade issues to maintain its own hegemonic self-interest. 
The U.S. side has even gone so far as to harm its own friends and enrich itself by imposing economic coercion on its allies, maliciously blocking and suppressing Chinese enterprises and artificially pushing forth industrial transfer and decoupling. These actions seriously undermine market rules and the international economic and trade order and not only damage the legitimate rights and interests of Chinese enterprises, but also impact the stability of the global industrial chain and supply chain. South Korea accounts for 4% of the total global output of semiconductor equipment. It hasn't yet decided whether to join the U.S. sanctions against the CCP, perhaps because South Korean companies have significant investments in infrastructure equipment in China. However, the U.S. foreign direct product rule also puts Korean companies at risk if they want to maintain their semiconductor cooperation with China. The rule places any foreign-made goods based on U.S. technology or equipment under U.S. regulation. So why is the U.S. government working so hard to shut down the Chinese communist chip industry? As explained by White House officials, one of the main goals is to limit China's AI development, which requires powerful advanced chips. The CCP is further strengthening its surveillance network, which is already one of the most sophisticated in the world. This is one of the reasons for curbing the CCP's development of the chip industry. Military defenses are the main priority. Washington seeks to make it more difficult for Beijing to develop technologies with military applications, such as artificial intelligence, nuclear weapons modeling, and hypersonic weapons development. White House officials say these restrictive actions are necessary to prevent the CCP from growing its military and developing new state-of-the-art weaponry. The CCP hasn't given up its ambition to unify Taiwan by force. The U.S. wants to prevent the CCP from launching an attack on Taiwan as it occupies an important position in the global industrial chain. A war in the Taiwan Strait would be a disaster for the world economy. In October 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced sweeping unilateral export controls designed to make it difficult for the CCP to acquire or develop advanced semiconductor technology for supercomputers and other military-related applications. This is the most comprehensive and severe chip export restriction on China to prevent the CCP from acquiring advanced U.S. chips and chip manufacturing tools. According to the Pentagon's 2022 China Military Power Report, starting in 2021, the CCP military began discussing a new core warfare concept known as multi-domain precision warfare, a strategy that hopes to combine big data and AI to precisely strike U.S. military combat systems. According to the report, the CCP has designated AI as one of its priority areas of technological development and sees it as central to intelligent warfare. The PLA could also use AI for cognitive domain operations to conduct disinformation campaigns, analyze public sentiment online, and run bot networks on social media, etc. The U.S. ban has left the Chinese chip industry in a pessimistic mood. In a report in the South China Morning Post, the founder of a Chinese AI software startup said the sanctions had led to a shortage of high-end performance chips, pushing up the price of existing chips, narrowing profit margins, and discouraging potential customers. Our cost to buy chips has gone up five or six times, he said. In the long run, he believes sanctions will force large companies to redesign their products or even exit the market, while many small and medium-sized companies could go out of business. Even for those companies that survive, R&D funding will be cut, affecting the ability to innovate and shrinking the industry as a whole. The CCP has criticized the U.S. approach as an attack on free trade and filed a complaint with the WTO in response. On December 12, 2022, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce issued a statement saying, China has filed a lawsuit with the WTO as a necessary way to address China's concerns through legal means and to safeguard its legitimate rights and interests. In response, the U.S. said the WTO is not the appropriate forum to address national security issues. In a statement, the U.S. Assistant Deputy Secretary of Commerce said, U.S. national security interests require that we act decisively to deny access to advanced technologies, implying that the CCP's military and civilian sectors are not clearly separated. The CCP has invented distinctive civil-military integration institutions. There exist a large number of companies in China, some of which are ordinary companies, some are listed companies, scientific research centers, universities, and so on.
On the surface, they are civilian institutions that have nothing to do with the military or military purposes, but in reality, they are inextricably linked to the CCP military. They collect intelligence and develop products for the military. The military even sends personnel to participate in all aspects of the production and operation, management, and technology development of these agencies. In a way, the military controls these agencies. These imposters and disguised civilian institutions can circumvent U.S. controls and continuously import various high-tech achievements directly or indirectly from the U.S. They even raise money from the U.S. either by issuing stock or by going directly to investors. A report released on February 1, 2023 showed that U.S. investors made 401 investments in Chinese AI companies between 2015 and 2021, involving a total of U.S. $40.2 billion in deals. The report was released by Georgetown University's Center for Security and Emerging Technologies. According to the report, a total of 167 U.S. investors, including the investment arms of Intel and Qualcomm, participated in 401 investments in Chinese AI companies between 2015 and 2021, accounting for approximately 17% of the 2,299 investments made globally during that period. Data shows that Qualcomm Ventures and Intel Capital have participated in 13 and 11 investments in Chinese AI companies respectively. GGV Capital, on the other hand, made 43 investments, the most of any U.S. firm. The report also notes that many venture capital firms may have made investments with Chinese companies that are on the U.S. Department of Commerce entity list. For example, U.S. investor GSR Ventures invested in Chinese AI companies with Chinese voice recognition company iFly Tech even after it was placed on the trade blacklist. In addition, Silicon Valley Bank and Wanxian American Healthcare Investments Group have made investments in Chinese AI companies along with China's SenseTime. However, SenseTime technology has previously been added to the trade blacklist. Both companies were blacklisted in 2019 and are prohibited from receiving U.S. technology exports. Reuters reports that the Biden administration is expected to release an executive order this year curbing some U.S. investments in the sensitive Chinese technology sector. Needless to say, the CCP has little to counteract in the face of a blockade by the U.S. and its allies. In December 2022, Reuters reported that to counter the U.S. chip ban, the CCP government is expected to develop a plan to support the semiconductor industry on a scale of more than 1 trillion RMB, or about U.S. 143 billion. The plan, one of the Beijing government's largest incentive programs over the next five years, is likely to be in the form of subsidies, tax breaks, and other incentives to boost domestic semiconductor production and research activities in China, and could be implemented as early as the first quarter of 2023. It's hard for the CCP to do much in the field of microchips, but it might be able to mess up the international market in the area of mature process. 28 nanometers is a chip technology that has been commercialized since 2011. It is widely used in cars, weapons, and a large number of Internet of Things devices. SMIC and other Chinese chip makers may use government subsidies to sell chips cheaply. Chinese authorities may provide more financial support to further increase chip production. Ordinary companies cannot compete in the face of the CCP's cheap dumping strategy because they cannot make a profit. Beijing has a track record of achieving dominance of key technologies by resorting to cheap dumping to crack down on global competitors. Matthew Pottinger, a former deputy national security advisor under Trump and an expert on chip policy at the Hoover Institution, noted that the CCP has done this before with solar panels and 5G devices and could do it again with older chips. Pottinger warned it would allow Beijing to coerce every country and industry that relies on 28 nanometer chips, whether military or civilian, which is a big, big part of the chip sector. SMIC was founded in 2000 with government support in an attempt to become the world's leading chip maker. It has become the old chip giant. In the third quarter of 2022, it posted near the U.S. $2 billion in revenue, roughly twice as much as the same period a year prior, at a time of global chip shortages. Chinese semiconductor makers will face tighter equipment restrictions as the U.S. government currently works with companies in Japan and the Netherlands. It has triggered a rush for Chinese chip companies to accelerate their purchases of manufacturing equipment. 
According to a report by Digitimes on February 3, 2023, some Chinese semiconductor makers are snapping up manufacturing equipment in a low profile and even snapping up some used equipment. SMIC and Huahong Semiconductor are among them. SMIC is expanding its production of older chips with mature technology. Between September 2020 and July 2021, it announced the construction of three chip fabs in Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Beijing for mature processes above 28 nanometers. Samuel Wang, a chip analyst at Gartner, estimates that SMIC will more than triple its production once the new plants go into operation. Meanwhile, new chip factories are proliferating across China. Such an increase in chip supply could bring down chip prices. However, the U.S. and its allies will likely further tighten restrictions if the CCP kicks off its strategy of dumping old chips at low prices.